know each other better. And the best way to do that is through storytelling. So I'll start with my story in the hopes that you'll tell yours. Growing up, I was a quiet, shy, introverted kid. I had a speech disorder, and I struggled with my communication skills. And since we have many facets of our identity, I was also a biracial child growing up in a black household. In many of the spaces within our city, and most of the media I consumed, whether it was television or video games, did not reflect my reality. So fast forward a few years later, and I'm at an event for Betterman University. And I'm trying to decide if this is the college for me to attend. And my mother is next to me. And during the event, I don't feel like I belong. And I think this might not be the college. But my mother makes me sit. And during that moment, I realized she was teaching me a very important lesson. The importance of sitting and being taking up space, even when you feel like you don't belong. So when I got my acceptance letter to Betterman, I happily said yes. <laughs> and so now I'm speaking to my advisor, trying to decide the best major for me. And she suggests public, she suggests communication, which might seem a little odd, <laughs> but I was interested in marketing and web design. So the first course they gave, gave me, as many of us know, is public speaking 101. <laughs> And I want you to think for a second what you think of when you think of a public speaker. If you have to close your eyes, however you have to envision it. And it's probably not me. <laughs> it's probably someone extroverted, very charismatic, and very outgoing. I want you to ask yourself, why is that? My first speech was on web design. <laughs> And I passed, even though I may or may not have went over the time limit a little bit. <laughs> but there was a comment left on the paper, grade paper at the end, that said, work on your eye contact more. And something so simple would prove to be so complicated for me, because eye contact was not a natural, my body just naturally did not like to make eye contact. So as I'm sitting at home, giving, practicing my speech in the mirror, I begin to ask myself the same thing I asked as that curious child. Why? Why am I doing this? And who determines these rules? Who determines this? And I would continue this questioning throughout my journey, whether it was when I was in college and I was told that you're too quiet, you won't survive the workforce. <laughs> they were wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I went to intern at a predominantly white ad, ad agency, and I realized that many of the narratives they were telling was not reflective of the team. Or when I went to work in corporate, and I would be one of the only diverse members at the meetings, but I still sat there and I took up space because they were gonna hear me. And when we think of stories, and when we think of how they shape us, one of the biggest influences of that is media. And media looks a lot different now than it did 50, even five years ago. Who here gets their news from Twitter? <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I can watch the news live as it's happening with commentary. I can DM a friend on Twitter in Dubai and she can respond to me in 30 seconds. That has never been able to happen in another period of our time. We can access information instantly on a global scale. And what this change, what this shift in media allowed was for voices that were not previously heard to be heard on a large scale. And we saw this through social media, through a lot of political activism that occurred, such as Black Lives Matter. And that during this time while I was on Twitter and noticing all these diverse communities and these stories coming up, I kind of stumbled upon a global media company called The Tempest. And The Tempest is a global media company for diverse millennial women, trans, and non-binary individuals. We have staff and contributors from 60 plus countries across the world. For everyone from African American to Muslim American to Latino to Asian American, the list goes on and on and on. We were here and we were telling our stories the way they should have been told. What was originally strange about me I would ask, what's the norm? 
This was no different. It was there that I realized what it meant to belong and what that I could pave my own narrative. I could do this as an introverted woman of color in these spaces. And it was there at the Tempest, together as a community, we found that. So I head up marketing, so I pay an important role in how we tell our stories. I also mentor a team across the world. <laughs> and it just always fascinates me how many stories go untold. How many things we consider strange or different that are actually the norm. The city is becoming increasingly diverse. The nation is becoming increasingly diverse. But many of our spaces do not reflect that. Everyone here can relate to some part of their narrative not being heard or listened to. I want you to embrace that. Embrace your story. I want you to have the same curiosity that you've always had to ask why you have to look like X or be like X to do X. Why, who says, and who determines that? Your story is the most powerful thing that you have. Your narrative is the most powerful thing that belongs to you. The last piece of advice that I have as we shape this nation, as we shape this city, tell your story. Mm -hmm.